Welcome back to my little channel. I'm showing you this cartoon. It's something I found and um, it's not something I totally agree with or disagree with. It's something I would like to address with everyone. Because there is something seriously <sighs> damaging about this cartoon. So let's start with the standard stuff. It's about transgenderism, obviously, because, well, it's not that obviously, but it is, fair enough. It's about gendered pronouns and how they would like themselves to be gendered. And it also explains why. So let's go through it frame by frame. I think sometimes people are girls or boys and sometimes they are not. Well, first off, you can think whatever you want. It's not true. I mean, sometimes I think I'm this or that, because sometimes I think I'm great at something and sometimes I have the feeling I can't do something. Me thinking it doesn't make it so. Them thinking it doesn't make it so. You can think you are a girl or a boy, even though you have the body of the opposite, but that doesn't make it so. If you're a born a woman, you're most likely a woman. And if you're boy, born a man, you're most likely a man. It's not a psychological or social construct. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, because we do have hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites? I might pronounce that wrong. But they do exist. Men or women born with both gen genitals, both, both sets of genitals. It's, um, it's a condition that happens. Now these are the only ones I would say, okay, you know what? You can choose whatever gender you want because it's your life, you've got to go on. And some of them will be more effeminate and choose to go as a woman and some of them are more uh, male and, and, and choose to go as men, fair enough. They are the exception to the rule. But the average boy or girl isn't the exception to the rule. Now, that's not saying that transgender isn't real. Uh, gender dysphoria is real. It's very real. And I'll, I'll come back to that bit in a moment. Let's go to the second panel. It's probably harder for non-binary people to feel like they belong to a group or another one group or another I would say them seeing how few representations there are of people out of the binary and there you have it this is funny enough the primary problem that people with gender dysphoria have it's not being able to identify to which group you belong and funny enough it doesn't say anything about the options it says everything about the self. People suffering from gender dysphoria have an incredible lack of recognition of self. They do not know who they are or what they stand for. That doesn't mean that they don't count. That doesn't mean they stand for nothing. Those things are not the same thing, but they have an identity problem. It's, it's, it's the ultimate who am I question. And a lot of people with gender dysphoria, if not all, have this identity problem and then other people will tell them, oh, well, but that's because you're this or you're that. But they don't even know who they are. So they will kick back, fight it, or follow people who they think they'd like to follow. And with that, they are creating a new identity based on whatever is being put in their head. So if you have a boy who is very insecure about being himself and someone says, well, yeah, but you're, you're more female anyway. Oh, okay. Then I'm now a female. And then everyone will say, oh yeah, no, yeah, no. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're female. That's all right then. Then he still doesn't have an identity. He still doesn't know who he is. But at least that bit gives him something to 
cling on to because people agree with him on that. People recognize this in him. And therefore he starts to recognize it within himself, whether it's true or not. Funny enough, the older they get, the more, slowly, the more of a self-identifying view you will have of yourself. And this then may cause you to recognize that you're living a very terrible life because you still don't know who you are but the person you've believed the last amount of years that you are you are also not and suicide is a serious problem within the group of people that suffer from gender dysphoria if they know who they are and don't get me wrong you could be a man transitioning to a woman i think it's not necessary but you could do this and have a happy life this however is the minority of people who switch from male to female or from female to male because at a certain point in time they recognize oh wait a second this is not who i am this is also why it's so important that we should not help adolescents who might be gender dysphoric they think they're gender dysphoric okay talk to, with them again in, in 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 a few years when they're adults and as an adult if he makes this uh, the uh, if he if he chooses to go from one sex to another yeah you know what you're an adult do what you do but as a kid we cannot allow this to happen especially there are parents out there that are pushing this on their pre-teens we cannot allow this to happen because if we do let this happen we are setting them up for failure the chance of them committing suicide as i said is 40 percent and funny enough it's 40 percent post operation as well so you'd think that the one thing they all think is the solution would then at least lower the suicide rate but it doesn't because it's not the solution the first thing they should do is figure out who am i and with that they need our help and it's normal that they need our help kids when they grow up need help of adults to try to figure out who they are and and once they know who they are they can continue on with their life create new images of self change because we do but we should let children make those steps themselves now i know there were people say well but there are plenty of transgender who are older yeah that's true now another thing that is true is that gender dysphoria is also more commonplace amongst people with autism and for people with autism the development of self is harder i'm not saying it's impossible but it's more difficult and if we then look at small children or even people with gender dysphoria uh, sorry people with autism of let's say 15 16 years they still have a huge issue with the concept of self and if we look at this assigned male cartoon i can't even remember where i found it i'm sorry you can see this is true for them as well because if we look at the the second strip again it's probably harder for non-binary people to feel like they belong to a group or another seeing how they how few representations there are of people out of the binary they can't even identify themselves with others even though there are others but they can't and then the third panel i know this might sound weird and don't worry about not answering but how did you know you were a girl i knew i was a girl when strangers used she when when addressing me i'm sorry my english might not be bad uh, best but uh, this is also not perfect it always made me so happy and i wanted to be happy forever so you're a boy with long hair as a kid some people said she to you 
Okay. Now, I've always had long hair as far as I remember, so yeah, that happened to me too. And my son has long hair. He's four years old, and a lot of people think it's a girl. Yeah, okay. He's four years old. He's still identifying self. He doesn't care when people say he or she to him. It's not part of his storyline. He doesn't differentiate like that. Funny enough, kids under a certain age don't differentiate like that. The whole idea of boy and girl isn't as hmm, prevalent as, as it is at a later age. So here we have a boy with long hair who was feeling happy when people said she to him. But the chance is that people would first say she, unless someone would tell them, oh no, it's not a girl, it's a boy. But the first thing people say to small children is usually complimentative. Oh, what a nice boy. Oh, what a nice girl. Oh, she's doing that so well. Oh, he's doing that so well. Obviously, the compliment is something they feel good about. The he, she bit isn't the factor that makes them feel good. It's the compliment that makes them feel good. But in this panel, you can see how easy it is to misrepresent that, to misunderstand that. Oh, I feel good because they said she to me. No, you feel good because they gave you a compliment. But they used she because they didn't know any better. Had you had short hair, they would have probably used he. So, does gender dysphoria come because of how other people treat you? Well, no, not really. Because if someone would have explained to them, no, they didn't give you a compliment because you were a girl, they gave you a compliment because of you, it would have already been different for this person. And then the blonde boy is like, I like they as my pronoun. I feel validated and taken as a whole when people use it. Yeah, I'm sorry, but what you're now saying is not so much that your pronoun is the thing, it's you deciding how people are to see you that is the thing. You want control not of how you see yourself, you want control over how people see you. This is the utmost important thing to basically tell people this is an identity crisis. And instead of me having an identity crisis and having to admit it, I'm telling you what you need to think of me. Because if you don't, that's an assault on me. So slim, so marginal, so small my self-identity is, that anything that doesn't perfectly align with what I think will damage me. That's what they're saying. People, especially people suffering from gender dysphoria, but also the parents of these people, do yourself and your children a favor. Help them identify self. Let them realize who they are. Don't focus on whether they're a boy or a girl, because in all fairness, that's, that's by far the least important thing. It really is. It, it's look at the average person ask an average person that's not suffering from the dysphoria to name 10 things about themselves their gender will most likely not be named their sexuality may be named their gender won't be ask the same question of someone with gender dysphoria and i guarantee you that their gender will be in their top three because that's how they define themselves. Who are you? Well, um, I'm blah, blah, blah. I identify as blah, blah, blah. Whereas an average person, if, if you to ask them, okay, who are you? Well, they give you their name. They tell you what they do. They tell you what they like. They tell you what they care about. They'll tell you if they're in a relationship or not. They might not even, even after they tell you whether they're in a relationship, they might still not tell you whether it's a gay or straight relationship, because that's, funny enough, not that big a deal. Do we really want to help these people? Yes, we do. Then the first thing we need to do is make them realize that this cartoon 
is rather descriptive, even though they wouldn't like to acknowledge that in showing themselves and everyone else that is paying attention that these people it's not so much that they don't know whether they're male or female it's they don't know who they are and they should work on the concept of self and they need our help with it and it's not to say we're so great because that's still bullshit because we're all just people but please let us not turn our back on these children because I can't imagine that there's anyone out there who thinks that a 40% suicide rate is acceptable in any way. Anyway, like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined and I hope to see you all next time.